They are one of the most elusive animals to spot in the wild. What I love most about leopard is that uh, I get to work with communities that are living here. I get to work with the communities that I grew up with. And it is these communities here in the Samburu region of Kenya who first noticed the presence of an even rarer breed of leopard, the black leopard. One Mzee told me that there is a black leopard that is found in your area. And I was not believing. I thought that maybe you are confusing with a wild cat. I have also heard those stories from the local elders around. So I just decided I want to confirm this kind of story. This week on Wildlife Warriors, join me as I meet Ambrose Letoluai, a researcher documenting the behavior of leopards and finding ways in which they can coexist with the local communities. Leopards have always fascinated me. Unlike lions, leopards are solitary animals and they're hard to find. But Ambrose and his team have been carefully studying them by using special cameras triggered by motion sensors, known as camera traps. I'm in Loisaba Conservancy in Laikipia County to meet Ambrose Letoluai, a Kenyan scientist working with a team from San Diego Zoo to study one of Africa's most elusive cats, the leopards. Their research for the last two years has been to try and understand the ecology of this mammal in this vast, arid landscape, to understand why they're in trouble and what we can do to save them. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. So this is your office? Yeah, this is my office. Great. Yeah, I Hi. have some guys here. This is Juma. Hi, Juma. Hi, Juma. Is Juma. From, uh, Juma is from Kenya Olive Services Training Institute. Very nice to meet you, Juma. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. This is Limo. Hi, Limo. Yeah. Hi. Limo is, 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 is coming from Kweja community. Oh, you're from Kweja? Yeah. Yeah. Can you show me a little bit of where are we? I know yeah. we're in Loisaba, but where are we? We are in the Loisaba and the, we are somewhere here. Right so in the middle. middle? Yeah, right in the middle. And those red dots, what do they? These are locations of our camera traps. So I'm working both at Tumbala and Loisaba. And everywhere that you see red, I've ever walked to this place to collect data or, you know, to put camera traps. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of equipment do you have? I have some cyclists before you go to the field. I must have a checklist that I have to undergo before I go okay. to the field. Let me read it and you'll show me. Yeah. Camera trap, well, let's see. This is the camera trap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Panga? Panga is here. Oh my, you need this to, what, to do what? This is too clear, you know, these cameras are very sensitive. Well, not to fight a leopard. No, 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 just to cut the vegetation. All right. the camera. Yeah. Um, GPS? GPS is here. All right. Yeah. So. How many different leopards do you have? Oh, you have some leopards here. We have some like 17 and identified individuals. How do you know they're different? So, you know, you have to identify leopard using the, the arrochetes. Like, can, can I show you something? Yes, let's. Okay. You see, like, this is the same, same leopard. Ambrose explains to me that the spots on a leopard are called rosettes. And just like our fingerprints, no two leopards have the same patterns. His computer software is able to look at the picture of leopards and by matching the rosettes, accurately identify individual cats. This is the same leopard. I can see this, these rosettes are the same leopard. Yeah, this is the same, same leopard. Yeah, it's being taken by a tour guide, but he's using his own phone. And this one is being taken by our camera truck. So, so you can use photographs taken from any different source and yeah. identify the different leopards. Yeah. But this is amazing. This one is carrying, what you is it carrying? A baby yeah. zebra? Yeah, foil. Yeah. Okay, are we ready to go? Yeah. Anything I can carry? Yeah, 
And these these leopards, how how do you find them? You know, like you, know, you have to when you are driving around, you must make sure that you look right, left, and you drive very slowly. So they could just be somewhere inside they can in be the inside kishaka. Here, you know, like this kishaka. Like you know, here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see this there's a, a bush tree here. So the leopard do like a uh, bush tree because they do hang their their mm -hmm. kills up there and again they normally rest during the day. And so they, can you see there's something there, look. Yeah, let's just try to look if you can able to see anything. So like for example here, this is the bush tree and the, the leopards do like to hang their kills up here. It's called so, a bossier tree. It's called a bossier tree. This tree is one of the favorite tree for leopards. And the, you, the reason why they do like it's very smooth and you can be able to see when there's a, a skull of the eland. So the leopard can just easily climb this tree? Yeah, they can, very, they can easily just climb how, this. How do, you, how do you know that leopards use this tree? You, you know, I, I, I can be able to see the marks. Can you be able to see any marks around the tree? You know. Uh, I, it's smooth, I can tell elephants have been yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> so my, I, I can be able to see when the fresh, like that one up there. Can you see marks? Yeah, like, Let's you see, know, where, where are they? Yeah, you can just try to, just to see like where you, your hand is, you know. Like there are some marks that up there. <laughs> you can point. Yeah, you know, like here. You know. <laughs> okay, so, okay, oh yes, yeah. here, here. So, oh, these are leopard marks. Yeah, those are the leopard marks. So this tree, like there's, oh, nice. there's a time that I go with a fresh kill. Like even, you know, you can see the, there's a kind, kind of, you know, the, the, oh, the wow. guinea falls, you know, the feathers of the guinea falls. So they, it, 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 oh, wow. they, definitely there's a kind of, you know, a kill here. Great. Yeah. Shall we go and look for more leopards now? Yeah, maybe we can go and look, look for more leopards. Where, where should we expect to find them? Maybe you can go to around the conservancy. There's a place called the Mrefo Dam. We, can, we might get to see leopard, you know. So on the other side of the The other side of the conservancy. Okay. okay. As we drive, Ambrose explains that one of the main threats facing leopards is human-wildlife conflict. Leopards are carnivores, and as pastoralists move into the leopards' territories, they prey on the livestock. The local people retaliate by trying to poison and kill the leopards. Again, you cannot... Wait, like, for example, is this a football? This is giraffes. Oh, giraffe. Giraffe, yeah. Okay. It's a giraffe. <laughs> so, and these are impalas. These are impalas. Oh, these are impalas. Yeah. And these are, this is elephant. Wow, look at that. Look at this, a big, big elephant. And this is, this is guinea fowls. They are walking up here. Maybe probably that is the food for leopards. So, let's try if, to see if you can able to see the leopard around again. Because... Well, definitely, it's breakfast was here and lunch too. Yeah. Lots of impalas. <laughs> lots of impalas lots around. Lots and lots of impalas. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And also the... Um... And there are guinea fowls down there. Yep. Okay, okay. Let's come and see this. You see this? <gasps> so, like this one. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you see it? Like here. So the leopard was here this morning. Yeah, come and this. Yeah, we missed it. Come and see this one. This one is now perfect. Can able to see this? Oh, <gasps> isn't this this a baby? Yeah. Is this a baby? No, no, I think this is a male. You know, like a kind of subhalat. As we look at the prints on the ground, I can't help but feel sad to have missed the leopard sighting. But Ambrose reassures me that when he takes me to see his camera traps, I'm sure to see what I've been waiting for.
Today, Ambrose Letolui is going to show me how he photographs leopards using camera traps. Given how shy leopards are, it's one of the best ways to observe them without getting in their way. When he installs new traps, Ambrose usually brings along a local ranger. Today he brings Laidra. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. This looks like a good. Yeah, sure. This could uh, look like a good uh, place you can put a camera. So if you, I don't know if you can just investigate that, like that bush tree down there. Almost all of our camera traps, we never place even a single camera trap without the involvement of the local rangers that are around. The local rangers are coming from the local community, so what I learned from them is that they have a natural knowledge that they can say that leopards are here. A local person can show you physically that these are leopard marks. Ambrose and Ledra have just found a perfect spot to put one of the camera traps. This is an area that the leopard clearly comes to. It's a natural salt lake. We've seen the leopard's footprints. We've also seen footprints of other animals, including baboons and impalas, and these are some of their favorite prey. So I'm gonna go and join them to set up this camera trap, and later we'll see if we've actually got any leopards in it. So what can I do to help? So maybe you can just clear up this one, because these cameras are like, anything like oh, this one. We've got to clear away the vegetation. Clear the vegetation. Yeah, I don't want to do it. So you can, you can just clear that one because the, anything that is just coming in front of the camera, then it can record a lot of... Right, disturbance. Yeah, wasted photos. And uh, now we are going to name this location, Sabuk. Mm -hmm. Sabuk. Sabuk. Now awesome. it's ready. Yeah, okay, so, so, let's put it up. So what we are going to do is that... <laughs> so before I do that, uh, make sure that the settings are okay. Then can you just please just help me this one. Mm -hmm. How do we do it? I've never. So like here, you know. Oh, I put it around here. Around it, around there. So yeah. So I do this way. I pass this my strap here. The camera trap is camouflage. Mm -hmm. So that they cannot scare leopard. So you, you press here so that they can move. Okay. Yeah. Press. Yeah, good. <laughs> That's a nice job. Okay. Then you make sure that your camera. Ooh. Yeah, no problem. Just keep on going. So it's now facing here. So let us try to see the camera if it's going to record anything. Uh, maybe you can just pass me. Okay. okay. All right. I'll yeah. be the leopard. Yeah. All right. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Meow. <laughs> 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 so now. Okay. Let's have a look and see. Then let us just see what is the leopard. The captain. Then. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. now leave. Good okay. luck. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Any leopard that is just coming across here? It's going to get caught. Okay. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. I can barely wait to find out if we will film a leopard. The next day, Ambrose takes me to the trap and explains what he does next. We have our data box here, so that when I, when I come to the field, I get the data. 
I name the, the card like you see if there's a name here of this so that I cannot mix then I put it inside this box like I have to put my data inside here then I have to replace this card but what, what I have to do is that when I replace I have to make sure that the card is formatted you know so when I put here I format the card and then reset again so that that data that we have already have is inside here and it is safe. So I put it here. And the, what I am going to do, I am going to, to go through the, 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 the data when I go to the office. So basically I normally go in the field to see if I understand the leopard. You know, it is very exciting to check. After I check, then I look through. If there are videos, then that is just fantastic. Then after that, I'll try to see if there is leopard because for us, we are aiming after leopards. So in this one, Basically, there is a leopard, which is great news. When I work, with, especially when I'm collecting data in the field, I really like to go through the data and when I see leopard behaving the way it is just behaving, it's just like, you know, yes, I got it. Next, Ambrose takes his footage back to the office, where he takes a closer look to see what he's captured. This is unbelievable. Getting to watch leopards completely at ease in their surroundings gives us a wonderful opportunity to study their behavior and discover things we never knew existed. And not that long ago, Ambrose discovered exactly that when he managed to photograph a black leopard. As part of Ambrose Letolui's work with leopards, he often tries to include the local community by engaging them in his work, explaining to them why they should not kill leopards. Leopards are also carnivores. They do cause a lot of conflicts with the pastoralists that are keeping livestock. So they are facing problem of habitat loss because of the people that are you know, encroaching the, the, the conservation areas. They are also facing threats because of the people. When, when they kill a, a goat of one of the person, people do poison and they end up dying. As Ambrose is from this community himself, he also has family here. And today he's going to see his aunt Coco. Yeah, the local community are also very important because they can able to provide you with adequate information of where they have already spotted leopards and where they have just encountered this attack of the leopard in the livestock and the field. So local people are very important what to call leopard research. What I love most about leopard is that uh, I get to work with the communities. I get to work with the communities that are living here. I get to work with the communities that I grew up with because when I go there to ask questions about human wildlife conflicts, I get to interact with the elders. After sitting with his family, it's time to check out the camera traps he installed nearby. Naturally, this draws a crowd. Leopards are important because they are species. Every animal have a role in this ecosystem that we are. If there are no leopards around, we still complain. So they are very important in our ecosystem. When you are coming to study leopards, be patient because one day you will get to see them. I want so many Kenyan scientists to come up and you know, think of doing other research. Leopards, it's not hard to track leopards. Don't have that negativity of saying that it is very hard to track. There is nothing hard. If you, if you believe what, what you do, track until you, get, you achieve what you want to achieve.
Ambrose's research and dedication to studying leopards is supported by Nick Pilford, a scientist with the San Diego Zoo, who spotted Ambrose a few years ago and has worked with him on the ground. Together, they are a formidable team. We started this program about two years ago here on Loisaba Conservancy, and we recently expanded south to Impala Conservancy, and now we cover about 420 square kilometers where we're tracking leopards. We're trying to understand how many there are, where they are, and which one of those leopards gets into conflict with the local community and how we can prevent that. This type of research is very difficult to do. It requires a, a lot of energy. It requires a lot of stamina in the field. You gotta, you gotta keep going, you can't give up. And that's the thing that I really love about working with Ambrose. He brings that energy, that drive, and he's also very important to us in the community. He reaches out to the community in a way that I can't. And it's Ambrose's connection to the community that has led this duo to discover something astounding. Not that long ago, Ambrose's camera traps caught something no one knew existed here. A black leopard. How I found the black leopard is that I, I didn't find myself. I went to community and you know, interview people about human wildlife conflicts and one of them told me that there is a black leopard that is just found in your area. And I was not believing, I thought that maybe you are confusing with a wild cat. And they, because I have also had those stories from the local elders around, so I just decided I want to confirm this kind of story. So I went to one of the rangers and he told me, yes, there is a black leopard around. So I asked my boss if we can put some camera trap around. He agreed. Few months, we got the black leopard in our camera trap. So we're very excited that the finding that we have here, the scientific confirmation of black leopard, has been recognized globally. And this is exceptionally important for the species. There's not a lot of attention paid to leopards. And I don't think a lot of people outside of Kenya realize that there's black panthers that live here in Kenya. And so the global attention to me is, is remarkably important, not only for the species, but also to support conservation. Black leopards are extremely rare. They have what is called melanism, the opposite of albinism. It's a gene that causes a surplus of pigment in the skin, making it black. Looking at Ambrose's footage has filled me with so much joy. Discoveries like this happen so rarely. But with Ambrose leading the charge on leopard research, who knows what he might find next? When we started our project, this is not even something that we believe that we are going to get so many leopards. But now, we are getting so many. So that is one of the things that they really like. If people pay attention to conservation, the way they pay attention to the release news about this black leopard, then maybe other species about elephant, other animals can, you know, get, you know, can get a lot of space to be protected. So if you can give that focus to conservation, then I think our wildlife conservation will be something that, you know, we are going to meet. If you want to help our amazing wildlife, why don't you start a Wildlife Warriors Club in your school? To learn more about this program, please visit our website, 